June 13th is marked across the world as Albinism Day and Made to Shine is the theme for this year's International Albinism Awareness Day. The theme was chosen to celebrate the achievements and successes of persons with albinism worldwide. It is also a call to stand in solidarity with people with albinism through their challenges. In this unprecedented time, people with albinism continue to suffer all types of human rights violations. The, the theme of this year's celebration is we are made to shine against all odd. We are asking you to support albinism, support persons with albinism, support albinism projects. God bless you, keep shining, and keep being the best that God created you to be. And we're now joined by Dan Oti, who is a coordinator of Media Action for Persons with Disabilities, to share the significance of today. Good evening, Daniel. Uh, good evening to you. Thank you for and joining it's us. A, it's a pleasure. Now, very quickly, what does the theme of the day, Made to Shine, mean to you as a person uh, living with albinism? Made to Shine, for me, um, is a theme that I believe is trying to show the world that there is peculiarity and that the color of albinism, which is bright. Of course, the, Arba, the, the name Abba, which is the root word for albinism, actually means peculiar, shining. So it tried to express what the perception that the society should have towards albinos, that the color is bright. It is not to be associated with wrong meats or meats that are actually has no basis. So I, for me, it means that we, sh we should begin to see the albinism in the perception of light, mm -hmm. which actually they are right. bright. Let's talk about uh, stereotypes and stigmatization of persons living with albinism. I've talked to you many times in the past, and you have continued to express that you still get such stigmatization from people in the society, those who look at albinos and want to run away or not to mix up with them because of the color of their skin. How do you respond to that? Have we changed? Are you seeing any change in the society in their relationship to persons living with albinism? I can say um, in, in the rating, say, 1 to 10, I think sigma has reduced, but this, the significance of the reduction is very low. Um, I think it is based on what media houses like yours and, uh, and what advocates and uh, um, activists like us have been doing over, the, over, the, over time. But I can still tell you that discrimination is still there, sigma is still high, uh, there is, during this period of lockdown or partial relief, I know once or twice I've been in public buses and you still see people saying you are carrying COVID-19 or you are carrying, why are you carrying Chinese? It, it looks as if it's a joke. And I wonder if they can say to me or if they can refer to me who, to my experience, I believe that I'm a bit enlightened. How much more those who, when they are referred to like that, will go into shock and will not be able to handle that emotion. So I would say, rating from 1 to 10, we have moved um, in the area of discrimination, have moved three points, but we still need to move down to uh, uh, five points before we can say the stigma has. We cannot neutralize the stigma in 10 years setting we can't really do it because these are based on deep-rooted cultures so we see it significant and impactful reorientation which is going to be backed by not just government alone but serious coordinated action from media from the uh, professional bodies like the hospital organization the hospitals um, as a, um, trade union association so that um, across board, there will be enough campaign to know that persons with albinism are born and they are supposed to be given opportunity to shine. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Having said that, Daniel, uh, what more would you be asking or you be demanding from the society in terms of support for uh, persons living with, uh, living with albinism? I beg your pardon. Yes. Um, I would, you know, it, 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 it has the people that carry the highest weight of action is the government. You know, being an albino in Africa, we have challenges we face, and it's the challenge of being exposed or have been vulnerable to cancer and the stigma. So the action of government should be, should be uh, the government should take it as a point of call to enhance effective inclusion in terms of health sector, like having a fund or a social insurance to cover when a person with an albinism is developing cancer, it should be given treatment across different hospitals in the country. And inclusive education, which is the basic foundation to empowerment, should be, I mean, effective to address the issues of albinos who has dropped out of school as a result of low vision. And totally, it, will be, it is nice and important that effective economic empowerment should be put in place to address the area of stigma. Because when albinos are looking for jobs, because of these deep-rooted myths, Opportunities are not given to them, even to express their competencies, which indeed they have. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest action should be taken from the public sector, backed by government, and organized private sector, so that we can harness the capacities that are inherent among persons with albinism. Before so going like... forward, that is what I'll be looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Lastly, mm -hmm. before I let you go, Daniel, in mm -hmm. some parts of Africa, we've heard stories, we, uh, we've heard uh, albinos being, in, yeah. uh, being threatened, some of them also yeah. being killed uh, as a result of myth, uh, when people say, yeah. oh, they use their body parts for rituals to make money and all of that. Here in Nigeria, mm. you live in Nigeria, you live and work in Lagos. Have you at yes. any point felt unsafe because you are an albino? I have been feeling unsafe even in the cities of Lagos. Because I can tell you, I, I, countless times I have been, you know, referred to, you know, people who make this such of this statement like, you know, and that is in Lagos. I have been engaged in Abuja by an international organization that told me that there, there are some locations, LCDAs in Abuja that still engage in albinism infanticide. The fact is when we refer to these things, people think it's in Tanzania mm -hmm. or it's in Malawi. But I will tell you that the population of persons with albinism in Malawi is less than 30,000. And the population of persons with albinism in Nigeria is around near 2 million. So if two or five people are harmed in Tanzania and Malawi, the media will be able to shout extinction because that percentage relative to 20,000 is high. But if 100 people are affected or are harmed or killed in Nigeria that have 2 million, sometimes you will not even know because that number relative to the percentage of 2 million will look low. So I, can, I am telling you that Countless times, people will still refer to me as look at money. And that is in the city of Lagos. How much more in the interior communities around Nigeria? The area, one of the ways I think government, federal government should address it, I've been speaking about it, that NOS mandate, National Orientation Agency, I believe that part of its mandate is to address strong issues like this. And the issues about albinism is huge because the number is that in millions. So I think NOA should do media sensitization, community engagement across the country to actually let people, reorient people. Like I told you what I was told that is happening in Abuja, that there is still albinism infanticide in some locations in the federal capital territory. So those, those are realities that exist that we need to start addressing using this uh, team that, that the international committee has endorsed, born to shine. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, Daniel, for your time. And we'll say continue to shine even out there. Thank you so much. It will be our pleasure. Thank you.